Oh, uh, welcome on uh, Founders Open Mic. And uh, let's uh, start from introduction. Please yeah. introduce yourself. Okay. Uh, my name's Tish Shoot, and I've really had a lifetime in AI and robotics. That was my first startup, which actually was when I was in my 20s. Um, and I also grew up in a sort of rarefied atmosphere of Cambridge University, where my dad was a professor and actually had been a contemporary of um, Christopher Strachey, who worked with Turing. So this is my life, AI, and I'll, I'll be talking a bit how I'm interested in quantum game theory and AI, and that is the fundamental, actually, of my startup is a, a unified framework based on you know, quantum grain theoretical principles mm -hmm. for multi-scale, that's really important, multi-scale, multi-agent intelligence on standard compute. So I don't mess with qubits. Yeah, <laughs> yeah let's discuss uh, more detail about uh, your startups, your, uh, what yeah. personality you have, uh, yeah. who is target audience. Yes, um, so my startup really, I was very, very interested and inspired by, I mean, I actually inspired because we've been so successful with narrow AI. Mm -hmm. In the last few years, we've just generative AI. Personally, even though I, my whole startup's going about going beyond that, it's it has enabled a three-person startup to do what 50 people used to be able to do. So, you know, hats off to this narrow approach of really taking the mantra of scale and the you know the transformer and generative AI to this level because it has enabled me, I think. The first, the first inspiration for this startup was that I really see the the limit. You know, having worked with the, these you know, language models excessively, <laughs> I see their limitations, and I really think we could go beyond that now. And I think we need to start looking at you know ways to approach it. We can't. I mean, most startups are faced on quite narrow optimization or business issue, new business use cases. I was fo focused on that at first. Was really I was looking at molecular discovery because, quite frankly, it's in the dark ages. It's like very, very, very needs huge amounts of compute. It uses a sequ sequential process, and that was really what I thought. We need this multi-scale approach, and but my the reason I can do this and not be down in the weeds with where the quantum scientists are is that because I'm really using self-organizing, self-learning LLMs as computational agents. Yeah. And the and the magic is I use this you know I'm using algorithms from quantum game theory, not qubits. Mm -hmm. But the real magic is I have this virtuous cycle of reinforcement learning mm -hmm. because very early on, on, on in this journey of this, my startup I began in 2023, I saw a paper of some MIT students who had been trying to use the game Bubba is You mm -hmm. to train LLMs in yeah. dynamic generation. And I just looked at it and I thought, oh, that's, yes, that's the way to go. But no, 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 not single agent. This has to be multi-agent, multi-scale. Mm -hmm. And that was really when I realized that, I think everyone knows the history of um, important uh, game theory has been to reinforcement learning. Yeah. But this is all game, this is all come from, you know, training AIs to play games that have fixed rules. Mm -hmm. The magic, because I, I call it, so I used to call it Bubber is Alive, but now I call it Bubber is Quantum. Both names oh, have yeah. a problem because people go, ah, quantum, ah, that doesn't work. <laughs> Remember, it's algorithmic and, and I'm really convinced mm -hmm. if you want to do anything useful in AI right now, it doesn't, you don't have to do quantum game theory, but you have to have a new algorithmic approach. Scale is not, you know, not enough, and also it has, you know, problems just going down that a, that a part, path. Yeah. So, uh, how uh, users can try your product, right? Uh, and what is the business model? And this is where I thought a lot about this. And as the at first, I thought, well, I, this will just be a sort of ordinary startup. I'll, you know, 
contribute a framework for, mm -hmm. for molecular discovery. But then as I developed the framework and mm -hmm. thanks to, you know, that, I mean, it really is a fantastic time for startups because mm -hmm. of this fact that you can do yeah. so much with so few people. And so it developed very fast. And what I realized was the core framework, you know, which is a unified framework that goes all the way up to this training environment, training and, and validation environment, all the way down to a unified system with a, you know, a full Hamiltonian, which is actually quite important because what I did in order, the, I don't know if how much you know about game theory, but you know, basically the heart of this system mm -hmm. is a care operator mm -hmm. that in the in the Hamiltonian level. So it's at the most, you see, at the minute we have, so it's really a play for ethical AI, real ethical, instead of this crazy bolted on constraints that aren't yeah. really helping, they're not really helping any of us that much, but I mean, they make the AIs polite and mm. kind and nice and stop crazy things happening. Okay. But this, kept, you know, my, Nash Equilibria up for this unified game theory framework yeah. are based on this care operator that mm. looks at you know energy efficiency, mm. homeostatic balance, the the ability of agents to you know care about what other agents are doing and to make collective wins. And then I they go to my game environment, which is an extension of this. The but the neat thing about the puzzle game Bubba is you is based on rule breaking. You can look it up, it's a great game, it's so much fun. But, yeah, uh, but, but uh, my agents create their rules so they okay. can develop okay. you know, strategies, they can test collective strategies, mm -hmm. and then you go back to why quantum, why does that matter? Well, you can, using superposition, you can, I, remember, I'm still using GPU threads, mm -hmm. but you can test multiple strategies. You mm -hmm. can prune strategies through interference. Mm -hmm. And entanglement when, and yes, the quantum math is hard for the, some of this because basically entanglement is how we're doing this pattern transfer. And yes, there's some hardcore math there, but it's been working. We have a, you know, for the, for the pattern transfer, there's some very hardcore quantum math, but I mean, again, I encourage people. There's, there's, there's a wonderful new book out, or not, not new. So, uh, how, uh, how um, users, developers can try your okay, framework? Yeah, oh, I forgot. I did um, not complete my thought on how people. I have now, and it's not fully um, opened up yet. Because it's open source. Or it's, oh, it, it, I've decided it has to be in a, the, the core has to be an open science framework. So, do you have some Git repository maybe? Um, I have actually, I'm about halfway through the, the core, the core you know, code and demo for the framework. And I actually, I have a paper which is written and I want to submit, but you know, for, for a scientific paper, you must show reproducibility. So yeah. I need the code finished. Yeah, yeah. And then what I hope, because it was a good question you asked, well, what was your, my first use case? What I realized is this framework goes way beyond that. Mm -hmm. You could train, you could radically improve the way you train foundation models. Mm -hmm. You could really, you could actually. Yeah, but train foundation model, it's not cheaper a game. Well, exactly, you, this would be a really, but obviously I can't do all of these use cases. Mm -hmm. But the wonderful thing about this is, you know, what's happened, I mean, I feel very, dis I feel partly so excited about what's happened to AI in the last few years, partly so disappointed because with this sort of, you know, like glomming onto scale, it's meant only, it looked for a while like only a few players could really be innovators. And what's magical about this framework is, you know, by, because it is a, you know, it's, it's on standard compute, and it's basically LLMs operating as computational agents, self-learning, self-organizing. Uh, and so it means that that's why I open source, I get open source. Yeah, the whole if it will be in open source, it's possible to yeah. be uh, use, useful for community, for companies oh, and God, uh, help so many to people grow. could build startups on, because what I realized, as I said, I began with molecular discovery because, you know, if you don't understand what you're doing at that level, mm -hmm with anything that, even though this is algorithmic and it's inspired by yeah. quantum, it obviously draws on all the math, 
it just has nothing to do with the qubits. I don't need any quantum computers. <laughs> thank yeah. God. Yeah, uh, thank you for uh, sharing the information about your framework. I hope you yeah. will finish and publish it. And yes. uh, uh, yeah. Well, thank you can. You. I mean, there's some write ups yeah. of what I've been doing, but not the final papers, all you know, published on my website, Cognizant. Mm -hmm. C-O-G-N-I-S-Y-N dot A-I. And, you know, I, it's really, I invite collaborators because I've been two years into this journey and I see its power. Mm -hmm. It can enable a lot of people to do a lot of things. And, okay. you know, there's the things I want to do, but there's much more. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Good.